a very popular word with our listeners is the word impeachment. And thus far, you're the only member of Congress who has brought actual articles of impeachment to the fore. Two, two more sponsors yesterday. Well, yeah, we have, we, I think we have uh, six, perhaps seven members of Congress mm-hmm. who have signed on to H.R. 333, a bill to impeach the Vice President of the United States. Right. Now, I, I carry with me a copy of the Constitution mm-hmm. because that's the document which founded this country, which kept this country uh, in intact as a nation of laws. That's all we have to protect our democracy. When we have leaders who trample the Constitution, who want to be a law unto themselves, who will take us into war based on lies, who would separate us from each other and from the communities of the world, they have to be held to an accounting. So I've introduced legislation to impeach the vice president because of the singular role that he played in telling the American people over and over and over that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction or that Iraq had something to do with al-Qaeda's role in 9-11. And he continues to do the same thing with respect to Iran. He wants to precipitate another war there. So I'm, so it's a matter of accountability, mm-hmm. and that's something that I'm p- certainly focused on. Well, it's also a question of, obviously, accountability for what he's done in the past, but also in, in line with your, your views on health care and the Department of Peace, prevention over what he may do in the next well, in it, 19 it, or abso- 20 months. Well, absolutely. Right. I mean, we, we must not forget that uh, it's still uh, rather early mm-hmm. in the president's second term, and he still has the opportunity to do many things. Right. One issue I'd like to uh, address with you, and actually I'm, I'm, I plan on asking the same question of every candidate I have, I have the opportunity to uh, discuss. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the notion of the, uh, the unitary executive in America and uh, what you would do as president to rescind uh, some of the unprecedented powers granted you by your pre- predecessor. Well, f- first of all, uh, the founders established a government which had three branches – executive, legislative, judicial. Congress is a co-equal branch of government. This president has taken to himself powers which have not, in my estimation, been appropriate for uh, him to assume. The uh, program of wiretapping, uh, extraordinary rendition, Mm -hmm. setting up torture camps, uh, these were extra-constitutional. This um, uh, uh, making assassination a, uh, a U.S. policy, mm-hmm. extra-constitutional. Uh, we, we, need to, uh, we need to recover our constitutional balance. Now, Congress seems unwilling to do that, by the way. Right. So having a president who respects the Constitution can essentially empower not only the presidency in a way that has integrity, but also cause the Congress to be more mindful of its responsibility. Well, it's, it's a uh, uh, certainly a brave step for any chief executive to uh, rescind some of the powers granted to him. Obviously, uh, there are a lot of extraordinary powers the president now has, uh, including the uh, the recent uh, declaration. I think is. Uh, presidential decree number 51 or whatever in case of emergencies he grants himself power over the Congress and all of these well, things. Well, you know, I mean, I've heard a lot of talk about that and I would say that uh, people have every right to be concerned given the track record of this administration that the president would try to assume for himself uh, dictatorial powers over the, uh, over the country in a time of crisis. Uh, this, again, is where Congress is called upon to provide an effective counterbalance and we need to review all of these uh, executive orders mm-hmm. to be able to determine which ones uh, need to be taken down in order to pr- in order to protect our democracy 